So as we go through the chapter, we start learning different factoring techniques. Section 1.1 that we just did was the technique was factoring using the greatest common factor. And that technique is kind of independent of the number of terms. Whether a problem has two terms, three terms, four terms, ten terms, greatest common factor factoring is, it doesn't matter how many terms there are. In section 1.2, we're going to learn a technique called factoring by grouping. And this technique is specifically used when a problem has exactly four terms. I probably wouldn't use grouping if a problem has more or less than four terms. And that's what we need to learn. So factoring by grouping is a technique that works when a problem has four terms. And let me just jump into it. The instructions say factor by grouping, then comma, state if a polynomial is prime. I'll explain what that is when we get to a problem that factoring by grouping doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is for each problem, I'm going to break it up into two factoring problems by introducing two parentheses. I'm going to take the first two terms in a problem and put them in a parentheses and the second two terms in a problem and put them in a parentheses. So for problem two, if I want to factor by grouping, which is a technique that's appropriate for rewriting problems that have four terms, I start off by introducing two sets of parentheses. Now for each parentheses, I'm going to factor out a common factor. And I'm assuming you're good at factoring out common factors, and I'm going to start factoring out GCF is, G, GCFs without um, doing much explanation. So the first parentheses, both terms have an x. The smaller of the exponent is x to the first. The first parentheses, the common factor is x plus is x. Now from the x squared and the 3x, I'm going to take away an x. From the x squared, if I take away an x, I'm left with a single x. After the plus sign, if I take the x away from the 3x, I'm left with a 3. Bring down my plus sign. In the second parentheses, both terms don't have an x, so I don't get a common factor of an x. But there's the number 4 and a number 12. And the biggest number that divides evenly into 4 and 12 the biggest number that divides evenly into 4 and 12 is this 4. The factors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4. The factors of 12 are this mess. And the common factor, the biggest common factor that they have is 4. So in the second parentheses, I'm going to factor out a common factor of a 4. I'm not going to factor out a common factor of an x. To fill up the parentheses, I'm going to divide the numbers by 4. When I divide the 4 by 4, it turns into a 1. I leave this x. After the plus sign, when I divide the 12 by 4, I get a 3. This is, turns the problem into something that's similar to what we did at the end of section 1.1. I have a common parentheses. I'm going to finish up the common parentheses by factoring by writing the common parentheses first. And then what's in front of the common parentheses are going to wind up in their own parentheses. So I claim that's an answer. Equivalently, multiplication is commutative. This is also a correct answer. When we start factoring by grouping, we have flexibility. Our answer will have two parentheses, and both parentheses are correct answers. When we go to check, it turns out that the bottom parentheses, writing kind of the common parentheses second and what's in front of the common parentheses first is probably better for checking. So let me go ahead and check this to show you that this strategy checks by taking the second version of the answer as opposed to the first because it's a more natural checking. I'm going to clear the parentheses now by multiplying the x by x and the x by 3 from the left parentheses and the 4 by x and the 4 by 3. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is positive 3x. 
x, 4 times x is positive 4x, and 4 times 3 is 12. If I look at this, this is exactly the original problem, so I know that I've done my work perfectly. Both my this and that, you could simplify these to be x squared plus 7x plus 12, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. If you know some different factoring techniques, if you rewrote this problem as x squared plus 7x plus 12 and then factored it into those two parentheses, um, that's good, but um, I want to focus on the factoring by grouping strategy, so I'm going to avoid that temptation, even though there's, uh, there are other ways to factor sometimes when you have four terms, rewrite it with three terms and then factor. So anytime I have four terms, factoring by grouping is a strategy that works. There's only one trick in factoring by grouping and it comes up in problem four. When I factor by grouping, I am going to introduce two parentheses always. And factoring by grouping is a technique that I only use if there are four terms. So inside the first parentheses, just like I did in problem two, I put the first two terms. Unlike I did in problem two, in problem two, the plus sign that was the middle term I wrote in front of the parentheses. That's not what I'm going to do here. The minus sign, if this second sign is minus, I'm going to put it inside the second parentheses. That's the only big trick for grouping. I'm always going to introduce two parentheses. The first two terms always are going to wind up in their own parentheses. The second two terms, if the sign in front of the second two terms is plus, it goes in front of the parentheses. If the sign in front of the second two terms is minus, it goes inside the parentheses. Now I'm but a common factor. From the first parentheses, so there's a common factor of x. I don't get a numerical common factor because the x squared doesn't have a number or has a 1 in front of it. When I factor out an x, the first term had two x's. I'll take one x away. The second term had a 3 and an x. I'll take the x away and be left with a 3. Because the second parentheses leads off with a negative, I'm going to find the opposite of the GCF and factor it out. The GCF, the common factor between 4 and 12, is still 4, but because the first term is negative, I'm going to factor out the opposite of the GCF, so I'm going to factor out a negative 4. Inside my parentheses now, I'm going to flip the signs because I factored out a negative, and I'm going to divide by 4. This negative sign I'm going to turn to positive. That 4, I'm going to divide by 4 and get 1, and then I'm going to leave the x. This positive sign I'm going to flip to negative because I factored out a negative. This 12 I'm going to divide by 4 and it's going to turn into a 3. Now I have my common parentheses and the x minus 4 in front. So for an answer, I could write the common parentheses first, followed by what's in front of the common parentheses, or I could flip-flop it and write what's in front of the common parentheses followed by the common parentheses. Both correct answers. Probably the second one's better for checking. If I want to check, and maybe I won't check much more after this, if I want to check, that second version is more natural, makes a more natural checking. It checks kind of how we'd want to check. So I'm going to clear the parentheses to show you that my answer checks by multiplying x times x, x times minus 3, minus 4 times x, and minus 4 times minus 3. x times x is x squared, x times minus 3 is minus 3x, minus 4 times x is minus 4x, and minus 4 times minus 3 is positive 12. If I look at this, and I look at the original problem, they're exactly the same, so I know my answer is correct. When you're factoring by grouping, you have to have four terms, and factoring by grouping only works as if after you pull out the factoring, you get common parentheses. Let's do five together, and instead of doing six. So for five, I'm going to introduce two parentheses. Anytime I have four terms, one of the best strategies is to try to factor by grouping. I'm going to put the x squared plus 9x 
in its own parentheses. Since the middle sign is plus, I put it in front of the parentheses. If this middle sign was minus, I'd put it inside of parentheses. I'm going to put a 4x plus 36 inside my second parentheses. Now a common factor. The first parentheses, both terms have an x. The smaller exponent is x to the first, so I'll factor out an x to the first. I'll take 1x away from the x squared and be left with an x. I'll take 1x away from the 9x and be left with a 9. After the plus sign, inside that parentheses, both terms don't have an x, so I don't get an x for a common factor. And the biggest number that divides evenly into 1 and 36, if I look at the factors of 36, um, the, there's a 4 there, the, fa the common factor between, the biggest common factor between 4 and 36 is the 4, because 4 is a factor of 4, 4 is a factor of 36, and it's the biggest factor that they have in common. So in front of my parentheses, my second parentheses, I'm going to put a 4. That's the biggest number that divides evenly into 4 and 36. I'll divide that 4 by 4 and be left with an x. That 36 divided by 4 and 36 divided by 4 is 9. I have the common parentheses. I have my choice. I could write the common parentheses first, followed by what's in front of the common parentheses, or... I could write what's in front of the common parentheses first in their own parentheses, followed by the common parentheses. I could check this, but I won't. I might not check again because it's um, the strategy doesn't, if you don't make an error, the answers are going to work. And if the parentheses match up, you probably haven't made an error. So I'm going to start maybe skipping around and not doing every odd pro even problem, but I'll do number 8 and then well, maybe all the problems on this sheet. For problem 8, I'm going to start off writing the x squared minus x in a parentheses. The second parentheses, I need to shove the negative sign inside that parentheses and find the opposite or the negative with the GCF. First parentheses, there's a common factor of an x that I'll factor out. When I factor out an x, the first x squared, I'll be left with an x when I factor it out. After the minus sign, since I factored out the x, I'll leave a 1 behind. Both the numbers inside the second parentheses are 36, so that's going to be the common factor since the number is identical. Both terms don't have an x, so I can't factor out an x. The first number is negative, so I'll factor out a negative along with the 36. Now I'm going to flip the signs because I factored out a negative and divide by 36. That negative sign is going to turn to positive. I'll divide 36 divided by 6 and get 1, so I won't need to write a number, and I'll leave that x. This positive sign is going to flip because I factored out a negative. That positive sign is going to flip to negative, and I'll divide 36 divided by 36 and get 1. If you don't get a common parentheses, then this strategy doesn't work. And we might say the polynomial is prime, that I don't know how to factor it or it can't be factored. For an answer, I can either write the common parentheses of x minus 1, followed by what's in front of the common parentheses, x and minus 36. Or I could write what's in front of the common parentheses and put it in their own parentheses, x minus 36, followed by the common parentheses. Those are both equally correct answers. For problem 10, I'll put the y squared plus 6y in its own parentheses, leave the plus sign between, put the 5y plus 30 in its own parentheses. The plus sign doesn't go in that second parentheses, it goes in front. First parentheses, I look at the y squared and the 6y. They both have y's. The smaller exponent is a y to the first, so I'll factor out a y to the first. From those two y's, I'll take away one y and be left with one y. From that 6 and y, I'll take away the y and be left with a 6. After the plus sign, I'll look inside the parentheses, and between 5 and 30, the factors of 5 are just 1 and 5. The factors of 30 30 or 1, 3, 5, 6, and 10, the common factor, the greatest common factor between 5 and 30 is 5. So in front of that parentheses, 
I'm going to get a 5 for the number. I'm not going to get a letter because the 30 doesn't have a letter. Not flipping any signs because I don't have any negatives that I factored out. I'm going to divide that 5 by 5 and be left with a Y. After the plus sign, which I'm not switching, I'll divide 30, divide it by 5, and get 6. I have a common parentheses. I have my choice for an answer. I could write the common parentheses first, followed by what's in front of the common parentheses in their own parentheses, a y plus 5. Or I could write what's in front of the common parentheses inside their own parentheses, followed by the common parentheses. Both are correct. Oh, let's do uh, 11 together as opposed to 12, just to knock out some of your homework. So in 11, I'll put the y squared minus 10y in their own parentheses and shove the minus inside that second parentheses. First parentheses, both terms have a y. I'll take the smaller exponent, factor out a y. At this point, maybe I could write in equals because this is going to equal the line above it. I, this, I don't know how much it really equals the line above it because there's no sign between and it looks funky to me. But anyways, um, first parentheses, I'll factor out a y and be left with a y minus 10. Second parentheses, because I lead off with a negative, I need to factor out a negative. The common factor is 3, the biggest number that divides evenly into 3 and 30. The factors of 3 are 1 and 3. The factors of 30 are that giant list, but what they have in common are 3's. So I'm going to factor out a minus with the 3, and then flip the sign because I factored out a negative and divide by 3. 3 divided by 3 gives me a 1. I flip the negative sign to positive. I'll be just left with a y there. This plus sign I flip to a negative because I factored out a negative. This 30 I'll divide by 3 and get a 10. Probably better to start writing some equal signs. I haven't probably written enough equal signs. As I look at my work, I was kind of writing equal signs, and then maybe not all the time I got lazy. It's proper to write equal signs, but maybe not. I don't always do it. You can see that I don't. When I go to write my answer, I can either write the common parentheses first, and then inside of parentheses, what's in front of the parentheses, or inside of parentheses, I can write what's in front of the parentheses followed by the common parentheses. I'll try to be more consistent with my equal signs. Um, in this last problem, 10, I could have written equal signs the whole way down because when you put the sign between, then it truly is equal to the line above it. This little gimmick about shoving the negative sign in front of the parentheses, oh, it almost looks like this is a multiplication and maybe it's not really equal to the line above it. So maybe uh, I'm just making that you know distinction there that maybe this isn't, isn't really equal because that looks like a foiling problem, but it's not. Um, I'm gonna jump down and, and maybe do 16, which is harder than 14 and then 18 and 20, I'm gonna skip problem 14. So for 16, I'm gonna make the two parentheses, 5x squared minus 10x in one parentheses, and when I shove the minus in, oh, oh, maybe it's not really equal, so I'll put a funky equal sign that, oh, maybe it's not really equal. Uh, it's just the technique that I, I like to use. Now a common factor. Between 5 and 10, 5 is the biggest number that divides evenly into 5 and 10. And between x to the second and x to the first, x to the first is a smaller exponent. Create my parentheses, divide the 5 by 5 and get 1. I start it with 2x's, I factored out 1x, I'm left with 1x. I'm not changing any signs because I factored out a positive, so I'm going to leave the minus. 10 divided by 5 is going to be 2. I took the x away. Second parentheses, I'm going to factor out a negative because the first term is negative. And between 3 and 6, 3 is the biggest number that divides evenly into 3 and 6. Both terms don't have an x, so I'm not going to get to write a letter. Now I'm going to flip the signs and divide by 3. 
this negative sign is going to turn to positive. I'm going to divide the 3 by 3. It's going to turn into 1. I'm not going to need to write the 1 because I have an x left over. I factored out a negative, so that plus sign is going to turn to minus. I factored out a 3, so I'll take that 6 and divide it by 3 and get a 2. I have the common parentheses. Anytime I have the common parentheses, then the method works in this factors. And I can either write the common parentheses first, followed by what's in front of the common parentheses, or I could write what's in front of the common parentheses followed by the common parentheses. Both are correct, and neither is really preferred. So um, either would be fine. 18 and 19 have a new trick. 17, 18, 19, and 20 have a new trick. If I'm doing 18, I'm going to put the first two terms in a parenthesis, 4y squared plus 12y. Leave the plus sign between and put the second two terms in a parenthesis. First two terms aren't the trick. Between 4 and 12, 4 is the biggest number that divides evenly into 4 and 12. I'm writing an equal sign because this really does equal what's above it. And between y squared and y, y is a smaller exponent. So the common factor for the first parentheses is 4y. I'll divide that by 4, 4 by 4 and get a 1. I won't need to write a number. The first term had 2y's. I took away 1y. I'm left with 1y. Not changing signs because I didn't factor out a negative, so I'll bring the plus sign down. I'll take this 12, divide it by that 4, and get a 3. And I took that y away. After the plus sign, both terms don't have a y. Both terms don't really have a coefficient. Um, well, this has a coefficient of 1. There's not really a common factor. Both terms don't have a common factor that's a number other than 1. And both terms don't have a letter. When there isn't a common factor, you need 1. And that common factor will be 1. So when there isn't a common factor in front of that second parenthesis, you'll factor out a 1 as the common factor and just leave that second parenthesis intact because 1 times anything is itself. Now for an answer, common parenthesis first, what's in front of the common parenthesis second, or what's in front of the common parenthesis first, followed by the common parenthesis second. That's 4y plus 1. I don't know how much it looks like 4y plus 1, but it's supposed to be. Let's do 19 together. So for 19, this is a squiggly equals. It doesn't really equal because of how, what I'm doing with the minus sign in the second parentheses. First parentheses gets the 4y squared minus 3y. Second parentheses, I stuff the sign in. Now I can write equals, at least equals to the line above it. First parentheses, 4 and 3 don't have a common factor other than 1. I won't worry about those. But they both have a y. I'll take the smaller exponent, which is y to the first power. Now I'm going to take a y away from the 4y squared and be left with 4y. I'll take a y away from the minus 3y and be left with minus 3. After the second parentheses, there isn't a common factor because 4 and 3 don't have a common factor. They both don't have a y, but it leads with a negative, so I'm going to factor out a negative 1. When I factor out a negative, I need to flip the signs. The negative 4y is going to turn to positive 4y. The positive 3 is going to turn to negative 3. Now I'm ready to write an answer, and I have two acceptable answers. Either I write the common parentheses first, followed by what's in front of the common parentheses. That's my go-to, but a lot of students' go-to is going to be to write what's in front of the common parentheses followed by the common parentheses. doesn't matter. must be depend on who ta taught you this originally, what your instinct is in terms of an answer, but they're both equally correct. One's not considered better than another. This goes all the way up to 36. There's really nothing new, but let's just chew through a couple of these. Um, I'll do 22. I'm going to get a squiggly. It doesn't really equal because of what I'm going to do with the negative sign. 
in the second parentheses. I'm going to stuff that negative sign. Now I'm going to common factor first parentheses between 2 and 14. I can factor out a 2. Between z squared and z, I can factor out a z. Divide the numbers by 2 and take a z away. 2 divided by 2 is 1. I don't need to write it. There were two z's. I factored one z away. I'm left with one z. After the plus sign, 14 divided by 2 is 7, and I took the z away. Second parentheses, there's not a common factor because both terms don't have a z, and this first term is coefficient as 1, but the first term is negative, so I'm going to factor out a negative 1. But there, if there isn't a common factor, either I'll factor out a 1 if, if there's a positive leading off, or a negative 1 if a negative leads off. When I factor out a negative 1, I need to flip the signs. The negative z is going to turn to positive z. The negative 7 is going to turn to 7. And now I can write my answer by either writing the common parentheses first, followed by what's in front of the common parentheses, or I could write what's in front of the common parentheses to z minus 1, followed by the common parentheses, both equally good. Let's do your problem 23 anyways, just to knock out some of your homework. For 23, I'm going to put a squiggly equals because I'm stuffing the minus sign in the second parentheses and it doesn't really equal the line above it. But I just like doing it this way. Now I'm going to write a solid equals. It equals the line above it. First parentheses. 2 and 7 don't really have a common factor. 1 is the biggest number that divides evenly into 2 and 7. But both terms have a z, so I'm going to factor out a z to the first, which is the smaller exponent. I'm going to take away a z from the 2z squared. I'll be left with 2z. Not changing signs because I didn't factor out a negative here. After the set plus sign, I took the z away. I'm left with a 7. Second parentheses, both terms don't have a z, so I don't get a common factor from a z. 2 and 7, the biggest number that divides evenly into them is 1. So there's not really a common factor, but I lead off with a negative, so I need to factor out a negative 1. When I factor out a negative, I need to flip the signs. The negative 2z is going to turn to positive 2z. The negative 7 is going to turn to positive 7. Ready to write my answer? Either I write the common parentheses followed by what's in front of the common parentheses in their own parentheses, or I write what's in front of the common parentheses in their own parentheses, followed by the common parentheses. Um, you can go ahead and skip 25 if you care to. Move on, maybe try 27. I'll do 28. In 28, I'm going to write the z cubed plus 5z in a parentheses, and leave the plus sign between, write the 10z squared plus 50 in a parentheses, and this really does equal the line above it. First parentheses, there's both terms have a z, the smaller exponent is the z to the first, so I'll factor out a z to the first. First term in the first parentheses had three z's. I took away one z. I'm left with two z's. After the plus sign, I didn't do anything with the five, but I took the z away. Bring down the plus sign. In the second parentheses, the biggest number that divides into 10 and 50 is 50. 10 goes into 10. 10 goes into 50. I'm going to put a 10 in front of that parentheses. I'm going to divide the 10 by 10 there and get a 1. I'll leave the z squared. I didn't factor out a letter because the 50 didn't have a letter. Bring down the plus sign, and 50 divided by this 10 is 5. So I have ready to write my answer. I can write the common parentheses of z squared plus 5 first, followed by what's in front of the parentheses, or in a parentheses, write what's in front of the parentheses, followed by the common parentheses. I feel like we're getting to be overkill on this. Maybe I wrote too many problems here. We'll just do a couple more. We're on the, the last page of my handout anyways. So, um, I don't know. Let's do, why don't you go ahead and skip 29, do 31, 
and I don't know. Let's do let's do thirty five three. Let's do thirty one together. For thirty one, I'm gonna get a squiggly equals. I'm gonna write a z cubed plus five z squared. You should pause the video and do this and just check yourself. And write the minus z minus five in a parentheses. First parentheses, they both have z's. I'll take the smaller exponent, write an equals because it equals the top line, and put a z squared out front. First term had three z's. I took three two, two z's away. I'm left with one z. Not changing signs because there I didn't factor out a negative. From the five z squared, I took the z squared away. I'm left with a five. Second parentheses leads off with a negative. I know I need to factor out a negative. There isn't a common factor. Both terms don't have a z, and there's a 1 in front of that z there, or a negative 1, so that means that there's not a common factor, but I can factor out a negative 1. I always have to put a number in front of the parentheses. When I factor out a negative 1, I just switch the signs. The negative z turns to positive z. The negative 5 turns to positive 5. For an answer, I can either write z plus 5, times z squared minus 1, or I can write z squared minus 1 times z plus 5. Some of you probably shouldn't be in this class or too advanced for this class. You might have went a step further because you know something that's coming up. This z squared minus 1 it's actually possible to factor that into two parentheses. That's too advanced right now for 90% of you, but if you wrote that z squared minus 1 as z plus 1 times z minus 1 and wound up with a 3 parentheses answer, that's actually beautiful because this actually can be broken into those two parentheses, but if that's, you know, if that's something you already know, you're way ahead of the game, you probably could have snuck into college algebra and been, been fine. But if you don't know that, don't worry about it. We'll teach you. That's actually an easy skill. Um, I don't know where to go here. Maybe I'll do 34 and I'll just stop. The video's getting kind of long. I'm trying to see if the one doesn't work. I think they all work. I don't have any primes as near as I can tell. That's okay. So let me look at 34. I'm going to put 8x cubed minus 2x squared in a parentheses, bring down the plus sign, put 20x minus 5 in a parentheses. First parentheses between 2 and 8. 2 is the biggest number that divides into both 2 and 8. Both terms have an x. I take the smaller exponent of x squared. To fill up that first parentheses, I divide the numbers by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Take 2x's away. I had 3x's from the first term. I took 2 away. I'm left with 1. Not changing signs because I didn't factor out a negative. And after the minus sign, I factored out the entire exact factor. I'll leave a 1 behind. Bring my plus sign out. And between 20 and 5, the factors of 20 are 1, 2, 4, 5, and 20. The factors of 5 are 1 and 5. The largest common factor between 20 and 5 is going to be this 5. So I'm going to put a 5 in front of that parentheses for the number. And I'm not going to get a letter in front of that parentheses because the 5 doesn't have a letter. So I'm just going to divide by 5 and leave the letter. 20 divided by 5 is 4. Leave the letter x. Keep the sign. I'm not switching signs because I didn't factor out a negative. 5 divided by 5 is 1. Now for an answer, I'm going to either write the common parentheses first, followed by what's in front of the common parentheses, which can't be broken down into two parentheses, like the last problem, or I'm going to write what's in front of the common parentheses, followed by the common parentheses. Both equally good. And I'm going to stop, even though there's more problems to do, that 35 minutes, that has to be enough for this section. Um, really important skill to be able to factor by grouping. I'm going to make it come up again in section 1-3, and I'm going to make it come up again in section 1-4. It's a big skill to have. If you have printed out the um, material, the next page, I believe, in the sections is this page. 
this is going to be an important page for a lot of you for the rest of the next few sections, sections 1, 3, and 1, 4. If you don't have this printed out, you might want to get this printed out. Open up the chapter 1 problems, and right after chapter section 1.2, before section 1.3, you'll find this handout, and for a lot of students, it's really useful.